Good morning this Easter morning. It's lovely to see so many people in church. Gosh, what a two years we've had. But today our song is Alleluia. And every time we say Alleluia, we've got a shaker. So we're going to stand and sing our opening hymn. It's number 348. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. now in the Easter Order of Service book to page two. <coughs> page two. And we say together, in the name, the name of, of the Father, Father and, and of, of the Son, and, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. <clears throat> Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. 
In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for Easter Sunday. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. We come to our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. We sing now hymn number 358. We're just going to sing the first two verses, Jesus, Prince and Saviour, 358. <laughs>
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the other linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do sit. We're continuing today with our series of stories of the women of Holy Week, as imagined by Paula Gooder. My name is Mary. I come from Magdala, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Until Herod Antipas built Tiberias, Magdala was the biggest and richest city for miles around. My father used to say that he was a farmer, and he was of sorts, if you count strolling around his three vineyards and two olive groves, issuing orders to the slaves, and sending his hundred sheep out with their shepherds as farming. I used to love watching the shepherd boys calling their sheep in the morning. The boys would come in the first light of dawn and stand outside the pen and call and call and the sheep would come flocking out, jostling around their shepherds, recognising their voices and ready for a day's journey to find grass. Then one day I woke up. The world felt different. I felt different. I felt hazy and distant, as though a veil had settled over my mind. I walked for miles, restless and ill at ease. They told me I had evil spirits in me, but even that I couldn't take in. I just wanted to be alone, away from the noise and all the people. Once when I'd been out walking off my restlessness, I met a man sitting on the shores of the lake, talking to a crowd of people. Something came over me. I knew I was talking and shouting and shaking, though I'd no idea what I was saying. But all of a sudden, a wave of peace washed over me. The veil lifted and I felt like myself again. The man, Jesus they said his name was, smiled at me and signalled to the people around that I should sit at his feet, like a real disciple. I held back for a moment, it wasn't seemly for a woman, but when he signalled again, I couldn't resist. 
So I sat and I listened. I listened with all of my being. He was talking about being a good shepherd and calling his sheep and then knowing his voice and following him. I smiled at that bit. I knew how true that was. But then when he talked about knowing all his sheep by name and calling their names, well, I chuckled to myself. He'd ne obviously never been around many sheep. Who gives a sheep a name? Nice idea. But from that moment, I followed him. Me and a number of other women like Susanna and Joanna and a handful of other Marys. So I was there when they killed him. We women clinging together in horror as the unthinkable happened before our eyes. We watched where they buried him, hastily because the sun had begun to dip below the horizon, announcing the start of the Sabbath. We sat together, barely moving or speaking. The shock had rendered us senseless. As the sun dipped again, marking the end of the Sabbath, I sprang to life. We had to do something. We'd agreed between us that we would return to anoint his body. My first thought was that the others, the male disciples, I mean, anointing a man's body after death was a man's job after all. Perhaps they would like to know where he was laid. I found out where they were staying and hurried round. Who is it? An anxious voice asked in response to my knocking. Mary from Magdala, I said. The door opened just a crack. What are you doing here? They might find us. James's anxious face peered out. Who? I asked. The Romans, they always kill the followers after the leader. I pushed my way in, but soon saw there was little hope in it. There was terror in the room. Peter sat in the corner, rocking and weeping. He's been like that since Thursday evening, James said. We can't get a word out of him. I returned home disheartened. How on earth was I going to find myrrh enough to anoint his body in a city that I didn't live in? I told the other women what had happened. I wish I'd kept that jar of nard now, said Susanna. I'd no idea we would need it so soon. Sweet girl, Jesus' mother said from across the room. You honoured him in life. No gift is greater than that. We'll find the spices that we need. And she was right. We did. We searched the city until we found everything we needed. So we went carrying large jars of water to bathe Jesus' poor battered body before anointing it. By the time we got to the place where the tomb was, the sun had just risen, casting eerie shadows over the whole area. We'd been talking as we went about how we'd moved the stone away from the entrance. That's strange, Salome said as we approached. The way the shadows fall make it look as though the stone has gone. That's because it has, said James's mother. Our footsteps faltered. We couldn't bear to see what happened now, but we also couldn't bear not to see. We peeped in through the entrance, and there, right inside the tomb, sitting as comfortable as you like, was a young man, his robe gleaming white. Don't be alarmed, he said. Salome let out a sound halfway between a laugh and a scream. He's not here. He's been raised. Go tell the disciples, especially Peter. Tell them that he's going ahead of them to Galilee. We turned and ran and ran and ran, dropping the water and the carefully gathered spices, not pausing for breath until we reached the safety of our rented room. In the end, I did tell Peter and the other disciple. I broke into his room, weeping with the news of another disaster. Now, on top of everything, they'd taken his body as well. The shock of it was enough to jolt Peter from his misery, and they ran back with me to see the empty tomb for themselves. They got there first, well, their legs were longer than mine, 
By the time I arrived, panting and out of breath, they'd seen for themselves that his body was gone, the linen wrapping lying there empty. After they left, I stood outside the tomb for a while, my eyes blinded with tears, wondering whether I could salvage some of the ointment we dropped in terror a few hours earlier. I leant against the entrance and let my grief and weariness take hold of me. After a while, I felt the overwhelming urge to look in the tomb one more time. The young man had now been joined by someone else. They were sitting at either end of the ledge. Why are you crying? they asked. I opened my mouth to answer when a voice behind me asked the same question. Why are you crying? A tumble of words burst out of me. When I told people about this later, I tidied up my words into a co coherent and comprehensible sentence. But the reality is I babbled on a tide of tears and snot about my Lord and his body and it was gone and I don't know where and I didn't know what to do. He waited quietly for my gibbering to fade away. And then he said just one word, Mary. The Good Shepherd had called my name. I knew his voice with every fibre of my being. Later, people would ask us, those who'd met the risen Christ, what he said that made us believe it was really him. Thomas would tell his story of Jesus' wounds and of being asked to put his hands there. Peter would tell his story of Jesus asking if he loved him. Then they'd look at me. Mary met him first, they'd say. What did he say to you, they'd ask. He said, Mary, I'd tell them. Is that all? Didn't he say anything else? They'd look a bit disappointed. But I wasn't. Not for a moment. Thanks be to God. We proclaim a God who calls us all by name. So let's just pause for a moment and just say our name quietly under our breath because that is a name God knows each one of us by and it is for each one of us that he lived and died and rose again. He is calling each of us today. Let us hear his call. Let us say alleluias in our heart. And with whatever courage and faith and doubt we can muster, be prepared to follow him. So we just pause and hear him and say our names under our breaths together now. Janet. We are each called by God, for we are each his beloved children. Alleluia, alleluia. Now, Easter morning was a morning of surprise, so we've got a surprise hymn now. And Reverend Therese has got her own special moment in this hymn. Those of you who are at the Hot Cross Bun service will know it. If you've got a green piece of paper, mine's white, it's got the words on it. If you've got several between you, or you know, you could share, maybe you could pass it to someone who hasn't got one. So, if, But if you haven't got one, don't worry, you can join in the chorus and... It has alleluias. 
So I think Lawrence is going to give me a note. Oh, hang on. Have you found more? Oh, right, yes. We're on plan B on this, but you know. <laughs> you can't, you, you know, you've not got your mask on, have you? <clears throat> so let's stand and sing on this Easter morning. Let us sing and we remain standing at the end. On this, <laughs> on this Easter morning, let us sing of the glorious triumph of the King. On this Easter morning, Easter morning, Easter morning, let us sing, singing Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And we turn, no, we remain standing and we turn to page six, and Janice will lead us. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In faith and hope and joy, let us pray to the Father. Please sit or kneel to pray, and Sandra is leading our prayers this morning. And when we come to the Lord's Prayer, we will join in the actions, which Teresa and I and Janice will do a triple act for. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? Christ Jesus, 
Without your resurrection, our faith would be without hope. But you are alive and reign, and we rejoice and wonder in the mystery of your presence among us. Risen Lord, we pray for your church around the world and here at St. Lawrence in Northfield. We pray for our clergy and for all those people who help to make our services and other church activities, both formal and informal, happen. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen Lord, we pray today for those in darkness and pain, those facing the disappointment of broken hopes, those with lives damaged by difficult relationships, broken hearts or broken spirits. Free us all from the shackles of guilt and sin and help us to proclaim the message of healing and forgiveness for which you died. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen Lord, we pray today for broken communities around the world. Especially we pray for the people in the Ukraine who are living with the constant horror and fear of war. And we ask for forgiveness of man's apathy of involvement in the plight of others. We pray that you may surround with your presence and peace those who are ill and the families, friends and medical staff who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen Lord, all of us here have passed by the road of the cross during this holy week. Help us to look and see your love. This Easter, when words are not enough to express our gratitude, let us take a moment to ponder your death and resurrection, and in the quietness of our hearts, whisper to you our deepest devotion. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen Lord, be present with us and show yourself to us in all our mistakes and uncertainties. Set our hearts on fire with love for you. Bring together all Christians in peace and harmony. Grant that our prayers today be taken up into yours on behalf of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father in heaven, we all stand in need of your forgiveness. We stand too in awe of your son, Jesus, who was despised and rejected for our sins. Thank you for coming to us in Jesus over 2000 years ago, so that we might know you now. And now let us pray with confidence as our dear savior taught us. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm just wondering whether we've got any baptism families here for to receive a dove. Anybody? Any of those? No? Okay, they may be coming later. So, we're going to come now to share the peace, and we do this just by waving and smiling at one another. Please, will you stand? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. And we include the people on Zoom and those who may be watching later. Please do be seated now and we'll just see who's on Zoom. But quite a few of our regular Zoomers are here in church today. But we've still got Chris Giles waving to us. Oh, and Susie Sutton and Paul and maybe the girls too. And Emily, 
and Stephen and possibly Joan Fisher. She occasionally joins with us by the phone and Yebu and Linda and G. So lovely to have them with us too. Now, this is a moment where we all sanitize our hands, but we've also got a hymn to sing as well. So we'll sanitize first. If you haven't got any sanitizer with you, wave and it will come to you by an angel or a church warden. Or both <laughs> combined. Now then, I've put my hymn book somewhere. <laughs> I need my other I need my other phone to record the music for the next service. We're going to sing Alleluia, Alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise. It's hymn number nine, and I'm just getting the music ready to record. Oh, you've got it on the USB as well. Oh, we've got belt and braces this morning. Okay, so please will you stand to sing hymn number nine, Alleluia, Alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise.
Please be seated. On page nine, and we're using the responsive Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise for the gospel we have received. Christ died for our sins. Alleluia. He is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Death comes to all through Adam and sin reigns for a time. New life without end comes through Christ and he reigns forever. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Death. Where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Death is swallowed up in victory. The victory you give us in Christ. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We have been crucified with Christ and live his risen life to praise you forever with angels and archangels. indeed the source of all holiness grant that by the power of your holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the wine and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, 
and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Lawrence and Mary and Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one breath. As we come to receive communion, we are intincting the bread into the wine, so you will receive both the bread and the wine. Now there's a lot of us here, so we're just going to do things slightly differently. So, Reverend Teresa, would you go and stand at the crossing, and then the people in the back pews can come to you, and your bread is already intincted. And then if you turn and face the other way, maybe people from, um, from this side, from the, sort of from, um, you know, in the back few rows start to receive that way. And then we'll do what we normally do, is people receiving from in the side aisle come forward first and we'll receive here. So if you're in this side of the church and not at the back, you're coming this way round. If you're at the back, you're going to Reverend Teresa and then we'll see the people in the front pew rows will come here. And gluten-free, gluten-free, both our wardens bless them. This is your special wafers. They're both at the front. So draw near with faith. Receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Also, if you don't normally receive communion, if that's not part of your tradition, do come up for a blessing. Blessings are available to everyone and anyone. <laughs> and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
So on page 15, we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now for the first time for over two years, we stand to sing the Gloria. It was played through during the administration of communion and the our wonderful two people in the choir gave us a bit of a preview. So please stand and join in to sing. We have some bands of marriage to read. We've actually got two weddings this coming week on Thursday and Friday. But coming up a bit later, and they're here today, are Thomas and Kate. I published the bands of marriage between Thomas Frederick Green and Kate Rosemary Hudson, both of the parish of Holy Trinity Sutton Coldfield. And Thomas went to St. Lawrence School in your time, Stuart. <laughs> and between Ryan John Giles and J. Belinda Hitchin, both of the parish of St. Michael and All Angels, Barclay Green, and Ryan's parents were married here, and Adam David Hinder and Rebecca Louise Jancy of the parish of St. John's Longbridge, and Rebecca lived in the parish. These are all for the third time of asking and between Anthony Andrew Tomlinson and Stacey Ann Fairburn, both of this parish are marrying at St. Francis Bourneville. And this is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Let's pray for them. 
loving Lord, we thank you that you have brought the, these couples together in love. All love comes from you. As they grow in love for one another, may they know your great love for them. And may their wedding day be happy and glorious and a brilliant start to a long, happy and loving married life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Super. Now, we do have coffee after the service, thanks to Ruth Clark stepping up to volunteer. If you don't know who Ruth is, she's actually our electoral role officer, and she comes very regularly to the um, Wednesday service, and she's also our eco-champion. So if you go and introduce yourself, and if you're not on the church electoral roll and you live in the parish or have been worshipping regularly for six months, we do have forms in the vestry which we can give to you, we can retrieve and give to you to complete. And they do need to be back, I think it might even be today. It might be today. We'll give you a few days because we have put the APCM, the annual meeting, back a week. So it's now on Sunday the 22nd of May, not the 15th, the 22nd. Next Saturday, we're having cash. You can bring your cash, but actually it stands for come and say hello. We had one last year and we're having it this time in church. And you can have a good look at the porch. You can wander around and see how good the lighting is up in the chancel. And we're having a fair trade cake competition. Well, we're having a cake competition. So you need to have your cakes here by 10 o'clock, 10, 15 at the latest, so we can all vote for the best. And we, the categories are a homemade cake, which includes a fair trade ingredient. Sugar's a good one on that, hint, hint, or chocolate. A bought cake you have decorated, or just a bought cake you like. And then once we've decorated and judged them, we will um, chop them up so we can all have some for valuable donations of cash or card. And it's the same on the way out, cash or card. Peter, you might just like to go and reset it. It has come over. Um, and also we're having the unveiling of the millstone in the pastoral centre. We've got a new display board all about it. It's not in the pastoral centre, it's at the entrance to the pastoral centre car park. And um, we also hope to have one or two of the Northfield revealed um, monologues around. And, drum roll, could we just have a drum roll? Or a... Oh. oh yeah, thank you. We have the launch of the Northfield Guidebook. You will see it here first. And for next Saturday, we are giving it away for a donation. Your donation could be a piece of cake. Okay, so that's next Saturday from 10 o'clock. I know you can't remember all that. So we have interesting pieces of paper to give you on the way out all about it. And on the other side, it tells you all about being erratic. No, it tells you all about Birmingham's erratic boulders, heritage of the Ice Age. If you won't really want to get me going and be bored, I can talk for quite a while on that. But there we go. Okay. And then a fortnight yesterday. Oh, it gets so much more exciting. We'll need another drum roll for this. We have our first beetle drive for over two years, four till five, and it is just an hour. It's available for all ages. When I die, we're not going to have a wake. We're going to have a memorial beetle drive. Get over it. So that is a fortnight yesterday in the pastoral centre. Whew. I don't know what I've been doing this week. I've still got a service to go. More profound and reflective but also joyful. On Thursday, there is a focus fellowship group at Julie Meadows' house. And if you'd like to come, either ring Julie or let Janice know. 
We do have our good box available for donations by credit or debit card after the service. We haven't taken a collection in the service. We now do a one on your arrive, one as you leave, one by the bank already, or all three. But we do take cash too. And easy fundraising, whoa, this gets good. If you're not part of easy fundraising, do join because one of our parents has won 50p for the church this week. Yay. And better still, Peter Chapman's going on a focus group with them and will be earning 50 pounds for the church. Right, anything I've missed? Thank goodness for that. Lovely. Right, we're going to stand now for the blessing. Now you just need to do keep both books in your hands and your shaker because we'll have the blessing, then we'll have the hymn, then we'll have the responses in the Easter booklet and they've got alleluias. Can you manage all that? And finally, okay, not quite finally, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again for us. We did that at Hot Cross Bun service on Friday, and I've brought the world. So if you want to go on the grass and have a round of that, you're very welcome to do so. But we have real Easter eggs for those who are under 16. With another service later. Oh. Might oh. have a lot of hot cross buns this week. To raise, just to raise her in a hot cross buns. If you can't get any, there is now a <laughs> national shortage. <laughs> oh, we're full of joy this morning, aren't we? We're full of joy for all the right reasons as well, even in a troubled world. So let's stand page 16 in the service booklet. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace, peace in your faith. Give you joy and peace and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And our hymn is number 672, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering sun. 672.
power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.